Let me begin with a quote. Quote, I can't imagine anybody ever even thinking of using the debt ceiling as a negotiating wedge. These words are not mine. They're not even the words of a Democrat. They come from former President Donald Trump. For all his terrible flaws, in this case I'd say a broken clock is right twice a day, even Donald Trump understood that what House Republicans today do not, the full faith and credit of the United States must never be taken hostage. Again, to quote President Trump, former President Trump, I can't imagine anybody ever even thinking of using the debt ceiling as a negotiating web wedge. Time is ticking before the United States enters into a first ever default on national debt if things don't change. Yesterday, Speaker McCarthy met with House Republicans in hopes of uniting his party around a single framework of cuts, albeit one that will never become law. Speaker McCarthy's meeting, from all reports, did not go well, to put it lightly. One GOP member said yesterday, I'm still a no. Another from Florida, I think they should go further. I'm fa in favor of very aggressive cuts. Another from South Carolina, I'm not there yet. We could go on and on with these quotes. Even now, Speaker McCarthy, this is months and months after he proposed making deep cuts as a condition as brinksmanship, as hostage taking, to just simply make sure that we avoid default. Even now, he is still very sure of the support he needs to pass a debt ceiling bill. Because the chasm is too big between moderates and the hard right extremists who are glad to see the economy taken hostage in exchange for their priorities. As the Washington Post wrote this weekend, Many GOP lawmakers and aides admit that it is not even clear whether their emerging plan can actually attract 218 votes. And now the clock is ticking. We're getting closer and closer to when we have to act to avoid default. So for all the speeches, for all the letters, for all the wish lists and meetings with this family or that family, the underlying facts haven't changed. At this point, Speaker McCarthy does not have a plan for avoiding a catastrophic default on the debt. Good morning, friends. So you still have time to claim a one-time bonus relief payment. The federal government has announced that the deadline to take action and receive a rebate check has been moved. Officials say that these payments may be worth anywhere from $50 to over $800. My dearest friends, Please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to learn more about these rebate checks. Also, in just a few days, I will be announcing several winners this Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, my friends, of winning the giveaways. Today, the Internal Revenue Service declared that's completing its first normal tax filing season since the crisis struck in 2020, with a backlog of millions of unprocessed returns from previous years fully cleared out. New IRS Commissioner Danny Werfel told reporters that the initial spending of $80 billion in new IRS funding helped purchase new scanning technology that has allowed paper returns to be digitized and quickly processed. The crisis led to a three-month filing delay in 2020, followed by a one-month delay in 2021. According to the National Taxpayer Advocates Office, the delays collided with staffing shortages to pile up a massive backlog of about 24 million individual and business tax returns by February 2022 that needed some form of manual processing. Ahead of the 2023 tax season, the Internal Revenue Service hired 5,000 new taxpayer service agents to cut down call waiting times. And with the new scanning technology, it was able to clear the backlog of all error-free tax returns 
leaving only those with questions, audits, or other issues to be resolved. A U.S. Treasury spokesperson said the IRS ended 2022 with a backlog of 1.4 million unprocessed individual and business returns, and those were cleared by mid-March, including a new 5,000 taxpayer services personnel. The IRS plans to hire nearly 20,000 new staff over two years as it deploys new funding from the Climate-Focused Inflation Reduction Act. Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives have targeted the $80 billion in new IRS funding as part of their spending cut demands in exchange for raising the $31.4 trillion U.S. debt ceiling. The funding aimed at beefing up enforcement and audits for wealthy taxpayers and business partnerships, modernizing computer systems, and improving taxpayer services comes on top of the agency's annual operating budget. So dear friends, what are your thoughts on all of this? Please let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Now friends, there is some news for residents of North Carolina, specifically those that reside in Greensboro. Eligible residents can take advantage of a rebate that will provide them anywhere between $50 and $150. The city is giving the rebate as a partial refund of city property taxes that residents paid last year. Greensboro city government has set aside $250,000 for the program, providing eligible recipients who apply up to $150. Members of the Greensboro City Council have told reporters, City Council has heard quite a bit from homeowners, primarily in our lower to middle income homes, and we want to make sure they're not adversely affected by re-evaluations. The City Council of Greensboro approved this program in March, and applications opened on April 15th. Applications will be accepted through June 15th, 2023. To be eligible for this payment, applicants must meet several requirements, including having their home be their primary residence and having their home within the city limits. Additionally, households with one person must not have made more than $41,000 in 2022, and households of two or more people must have made less than or equal to $47,000. The exact amount that one will receive from this payment is the difference people paid in city home property taxes in 2021 compared to what they paid in 2022. The Internal Revenue Service announced that about $1.5 billion in tax refund dollars from 2019 remain unclaimed because nearly 1.5 million Americans still have not filed their tax returns from that year. In California, the number of people with unclaimed 2019 tax refund dollars is about 145,000. Altogether, those people may be owed $142 million, with the average potential return in the state estimated to be about $856. Those with unclaimed tax returns from 2019 have until July 17th of this year to receive their money. Under the law, Americans typically have three years to file their tax returns and claim their refunds. If they don't, their money becomes property of the U.S. Treasury. Normally, filing deadline for old returns comes in April, when current returns are due. But the IRS extended the deadline for 2019 to July of this year because of the crisis. Well, my most amazing and awesome friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this morning. Thank you, dearest friends, for being part of this community and for being here every single day. To say thank you, friends, I will be announcing several winners this coming Friday for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, dear friends, the more chances of winning the giveaways. 
Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.